So we're going to suppose that there was only one person who received an HLAB offer, and maybe there are two people who had no HLAB offer. Again, in reality, the data set was bigger than three people, but let's make our lives easy for a moment. Okay? And suppose this one person who received an HLAB offer lost their case. Okay, this is the win outcome, be equal to one if they won, zero otherwise. And the two people who did not receive HLAB offers, one of them lost and one of them won. Suppose this is our entire data set. Of course the data set was bigger. But suppose this was the whole thing. Here's the idea. Let me write these three numbers this way. And let me label these two groups this way. Let's call this one A and this one B. So what we actually observed is for the one person in group A, a zero, and for the two people in group B, a zero and a one. Right? What we're going to do is we're going to assume the null hypothesis that which group you're in, A or B, has nothing to do with whether you won your case. Which group you're in has nothing to do with whether you won your case. If that's true, then we should be able to mix up these values, reallocate these two zeros and the one any way we like. And that should be just as likely to have occurred as what we actually saw. In particular, we need to think back to our previous discussion of different ways of randomizing. Suppose that the way we assigned one person to group A and two people to group B was to put three names in a hat and draw one. That's possible. That's called complete randomization. So then I want to think about how else our data set might have turned out. What actually happened is person one was in group, assigned to group A, and persons two and three were assigned to group B, but it could have gone this way, right? That person two was assigned to group A, and persons one and three were assigned to B, and it could have gone like this as well. And those are all the possibilities. If I'm going to put three names in a hat and draw one, and say that's in group A, and say the other two are in group B, these are the only possibilities. What we're going to do here is, for each of these different possibilities, we're going to write down what the difference in mean win rates between group A and B would have been, assuming that which group you're in has nothing to do with these values. In other words, under the null hypothesis, person one would have lost the case, gotten a zero, regardless of whether he was in group A or B. Person two would have gotten a zero, regardless of whether she was in A or B. Person three would have gotten a one, regardless of whether she was in A or B. So we're going to think about what the difference in means, what the value of the test statistic would be for each of these possible random allocations, each of these possible randomizations. What did we actually see? What we actually saw was that in group A, zero was the win rate, right? In group A, zero was the win rate. And in group B, the win rate was 0.5, right? That's what we saw. And so the difference in means that we actually saw was zero minus 0.5, which is equal to negative 0.5. Okay, that's the one we actually observed. But now we're going to imagine that actually it was person two who was in group A and persons one and three who were in group B, but the outcomes didn't change because under the null hypothesis, which group you're in has nothing to do with whether you win. So now we're going to say, okay, the win rate in group A was zero because person two did not win. And the win rate in group B was the mean of zero and one, still 0.5. And I still get a negative 0.5 here. What about this one? Now we're going to pretend for a moment that it's person number three who have been chosen to be in group A. Okay? But the outcomes didn't change because we're assuming under the null that the outcomes do not depend on which group you're in. So we have person A. If we look only at those in group A, given that this is the random allocation, the win rate would be 1, right? 100%. And in group B, the mean of 0 and 0 is 0 and we get a 1. Now we're going to draw the reference distribution. So the test statistic we're using is the difference in win rates. And the reference distribution is going to be the same idea for each possible value of the test statistic. What's the probability that it would have occurred if the null hypothesis is true? If it's true that your win outcome, 0 or 1, has nothing to do with which group you're in, 
Well, since it's equally likely that any of these three random allocations would have been the one we'd chosen, it's equally likely that I would have chosen out of the hat person one, person two, or person three. Each of these values of the test statistic is equally likely. In other words, there's a one-third chance that the value of the test statistic I would see is one, and a two-thirds chance that the value of the test statistic I'd see would be negative 0.5. And now we can go through the same process we went through before. What we actually observed was this one. What we actually observed was that one. We actually observed a test statistic of negative 0.5. And so we asked the question, what's the probability that we would have seen data at least as extreme as we actually saw if the null is true? If it's true that the win outcome has nothing to do with which group you're in, the probability we would have seen a difference in means at least as small as negative 0.5 two-thirds, right? It's two-thirds. That's the left-sided p-value. Here the right-sided p-value would actually be one because there's a hundred percent chance we would have seen a difference in means at least as big as negative 0.5. And we use this p-value to assess whether we have evidence contradicting the null hypothesis. We say if the win outcome has nothing to do with which group you're in, what's the probability we'd see a difference in means at least this small, two-thirds. So therefore, this data is not at all surprising if it were just happening by chance. We do not have evidence contradicting our null in this little fake data set that I made up here. 